The sun's activity really picks up this week. We have a new region that's rotating into Earth view. It's even fired off a solar storm to our east. And are you ready for the eclipse? Did you know it brings its own unique form of space weather? Those stories and more in the news this week. The sun's activity is really picking up this week, aside from the total solar eclipse that's going to happen on August 21st, where it cuts all the way across America. I'm going to be broadcasting live from one of the NASA centers in Missouri, but more on that later. We have region 2671 that is becoming into Earth view. It started growing a couple days ago on the sun's backside, and it's been firing off little things here and there. It's even fired a huge solar storm that has now gone east of Earth, and we will be watching it as it rotates into the Earth strike zone sometime around this weekend. Also, we have this big coronal hole that could be giving us some fast wind at Earth here in the next day or two, so there's a good chance for some solar storming. So combine all these things together, and the space weather this week is really looking exciting. Switching to your M-Flare threat meter, you can see we've been pretty quiet for quite some time. And then on August 14th, we started popping up above the C-class level. This is because of region 2671 as it rotated into Earth view. It's now regularly giving us C-class flares. So for you amateur radio operators, this means more noise on the bands. And this will continue even through the eclipse as long as this region is visible probably around over the next 10 days or so. And we do have uh, a risk for M flares here, but we haven't quite seen it reach that threshold. So just be ready, there could be a radio blackout or two. Switching to our solar storm conditions, you can see the last time we actually had activity was clear back at the first week of August. Since then, things have quieted down, and we've been sitting at unsettled conditions to actually normal conditions for quite some time, which I know is pretty boring for you Aurora photographers. The good news is we have a chance for some solar storming coming here in the next couple days because of this fast wind. We might even see storming at mid-latitude, so you actually have a chance to capture some Aurora. Now let's talk about the other unique thing that the Sun has in store for us this week, and that's the total solar eclipse on August 21st. If you go to eclipse2017.nasa.gov, you can see all sorts of activities that they have lined up surrounding the eclipse, including viewing locations and even citizen science projects, some of which are space weather related. Now, I will be broadcasting on live TV at one of the 12 broadcasting centers that NASA has set up in the path of totality. I'll be located in Jefferson City, Missouri, along with the Glenn Research Center folks, and we will be broadcasting live starting around 1700 uh, UT time, that's Zulu time, which is about 1 o'clock uh, Eastern time. Now, of course, if you do plan to watch the eclipse directly, there are safety procedures you need to keep in mind. You either have to put on those glasses that are very specially made for the eclipse, or there are other techniques that you can use, like poking pinholes in paper and watching it that way, or you can watch it online. But safety first. So now let's talk about how the space weather of the eclipse actually affects amateur radio and GPS. Now, the unique thing about the eclipse is that it kind of mimics a sunset and then a sunrise. So what is perfect for that is this particular plot that shows basically the three different regions you have with amateur radio propagation. You have the daytime, you have the gray line, which is when the sun sets or rises, and then you have the nighttime. But during an eclipse, it's kind of different, so we can actually just take this and change all the labels. Here we have this, instead of it just being daytime, this becomes the pre-eclipse region. Now during the partial eclipse, it kind of mimics a gray line. It's almost like the sun is going down. So the gray line becomes the partial eclipse region. And then the nighttime, this actually becomes what the region is like in the path of totality when there's a total eclipse. It, everything goes to night. So if you kind of look at this plot this way, it really gives you a much more intuitive feel as to what's going to happen when the eclipse occurs. On the amateur radio bands during the day, you have the D and E regions. So those long wavelengths, like 30 meters on up to 160 meters, you can't really play on those. But as the sun sets, or in this case, as we go through the partial eclipse, the D and E layers, they begin to collapse and disappear. 
That means you open up the bands from 30 to 160 meters and you might actually get skip conditions, especially as we move on into the totality where you have a total solar eclipse and it's like nighttime. Now you get all these new conditions that you hadn't expected and you will likely get contacts that you never expected to get during the day. And then when totality ends, it goes back to the kind of gray line conditions because of the partial eclipse. It's almost like the sun is rising again. And then once the partial eclipse is over, the D regions and E regions reform and it's back to the daytime conditions. So now the other really unique thing that happens with space weather during a solar eclipse is that there's all sorts of changes going on in the upper atmosphere very, very quickly. For example, having that shadow going across the Earth causes all sorts of temperature changes, which then create instabilities in the upper atmosphere. So you get plasma bubbles welling up and waves being created really quickly. You also have, because of the lack of sunlight, you have conductivity changing in the upper ionosphere. And that causes all sorts of different currents and waves as well. So think of the, the sun's passage uh, across with that shadow going is kind of like having a swimmer in a pool racing across the pool very quickly and what's left over is this turbulent surface of the water. That's exactly what those ionospheric layers look like. And for things like GPS as well as for amateur radio, that can cause things that what we call a scintillation. Now scintillation is kind of like twinkle twinkle little star when you see it with your eyes when you see a star light twinkle like that. That is the same kind of thing but imagine if it was your GPS signal. So we've got a lot of science projects, including citizen science projects, where people are actually taking their cell phones and they're looking at the GPS signal and seeing how it changes as the eclipse goes by. Pretty cool, huh? And we'll be reporting about all of these space weather effects as they happen. So be sure to catch the live stream. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the hit from that fast wind. It should hit us starting around tomorrow and possibly into the 18th. At high latitudes, we're expecting minor storm conditions with about a 70% chance of a major storm. At mid latitudes, we're only expecting active conditions with about a 25 to 30% chance of a minor storm. And this is great for you aurora photographers. You've been missing storm conditions for a while. We might actually get aurora down to mid latitudes so you can capture more pics in more places, which will be wonderful. But don't worry, you amateur radio operators. This, these conditions will be quieting down through the weekend and it should be all nice and quiet for the eclipse. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, we are watching region 2671 now that it is rotated into Earth view. It is a threat for M flares, even though it's not that big a threat yet. It is popping off C-class flares, which I'm sure is making the ham radio bands a bit noisy. NOAA has upped the flare risk to about 10% right now, and we might see that continue to increase depending upon how this region grows. So we are at a small risk for radio blackouts right now, but nothing super substantial at the moment. But these conditions will continue over about the next 10 days until this region rotates out of the Earth view. So the space weather this week is extremely exciting. Not only do we have some fast wind coming that should give us some solar storming so you aurora photographers can get your pictures, we have a new active region that's rotated into Earth view. It's been firing off some solar storms as well as some flares. We might even get an M flare or two and some spectacular pictures there. But we also have this total solar eclipse that's going to be going from one coast to the other of the United States. It's going to pass no less than 14 states on its magical journey and I will be there live in Jefferson City, Missouri, hopefully talking to amateur radio operators and other people that are been watching it. I'm going to even try to do some periscopes, some live periscopes behind the scenes so I'll keep you updated on that. Take a look at my Twitter feed for uh, updates on when I can do the periscopes. I'm going to try to sneak some cool stuff from behind the scenes there. And I'm also even ready with my Space Weather Woman uh, Eclipse Field Reporter shirt for 2017. You can see the eclipse right there. Guaranteed I'm going to be wearing this on August 21st when we broadcast live. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.